Hey, if you're new to the channel but enjoying the content, please take a minute to subscribe and ring that bell. Thanks so much. Welcome everybody, it's Comic Artist Pro Secrets. You are listening to Ethan Van Skyver, 20-year veteran of the comic book industry and apparently the 74th most powerful man in comics. This is Bleeding Cool. I just want to run through this article really quick and just explain. This article comes out at the perfect time. It's the end of 2018. Um... <clears throat> a year in which I wasn't sure about my um, the very existence of my career. I didn't know where it was going to go. Uh, shortly after the election of Donald Trump, in case you don't know who I am, I am a Trump supporter. I'm a Republican, which is a very rare thing in comics, especially somebody who's outspoken uh, about uh, their support of Donald Trump. Uh, and because I was uh, outspoken about my support of Donald Trump, I was swarmed and harassed by SJWs uh, all through the year 2017 uh, and then into 2018 and it had gotten so bad by early 2018 first of all November of 2017 I made a public appearance uh, I was threatened my life was threatened um, and the establishment where I appeared actually these nuts they threw bricks through the window of the door um, and uh, it was it was something else it was pretty alarming and it kind of sent a I guess they meant to send a message don't show your face anywhere um, I carried on. Um, by February, these people were so intent to ruin my reputation, to call me a Nazi, to call me a racist and a bigot, uh, and to engage in letter writing campaigns to the president of Warner Brothers and the president of DC Comics. Uh, it really got very, very intense. And DC Comics uh, said, well, maybe, you know, I had meetings with HR, uh, meetings with friends at DC about this. Help me. You know, these people are calling me a Nazi. What can we do about it? I'm not a Nazi. I don't want to be treated this way. And it feels awful. I mean, this kind of intense harassment for a long, sustained period of time really does wear you down. Uh, these people were openly fantasizing about my death, my suicide, uh, my career being over, me being homeless. The best thing that somebody wished for was that I'd have a lifelong career as a Walmart greeter. That sounds okay to me. Uh, I can say hello to uh, Walmart shoppers uh, and wear the little blue vest. I could rock that vest. Uh, alas, uh, that wasn't that wasn't to be. DC Comics said, maybe, Ethan, if you take down your social media, uh, maybe if you get rid of your Twitter, maybe if you take down your fledgling YouTube channel and just go away, just disappear, uh, this will stop. Now, uh, I listened to that. I considered that it might stop should I take down my social media. Uh, but I said to them, no, I, I can't do that. I will not take down my YouTube channel especially, maybe my Twitter, not Twitter's garbage. I would never take down my YouTube. My YouTube is my sword and shield. How can I communicate with people and let them know that I am not these things? How can I tell normal people that they're lying about me? How can I protect myself and my reputation if I don't have my voice? And I really need my voice. I can't let you take my voice from me. Uh, and at which time I uh, told them that it was probably best uh, if we sever relations at that point. I, I can't do what you want me to do. I can't I can't disappear. That would be the ultimate defeat to just disappear under accusations, under lies, uh, that you worship Hitler. I, I can't think of a, all of the think about this. Think about the fact that your reputation is destroyed as somebody uh, who supports anti Semitism, homophobia, bigotry, a Nazi, um, utterly destroyed. And they, go, they really go through great lengths to actually do this to people. And for what? Because I wanted to draw comic books for a living since I was 12 years old. That, that got to be my favorite. I am who I am. I am a Republican. I can't change that. You can't, you, you can't drill into my head, give me a lobotomy, and make me turn into an SJW. I can't do I'm not capable of that. So I am a Republican. That is who I am. I'm not going to change. Uh, I have chosen with my life, with my time and my energy, my strength, my God-given talent to draw comic books. It's a silly career uh, telling stories. Obviously, it's not important to anyone, really. It shouldn't be important to anyone. Uh, it's just meant to be fun. I'm just meant to, to make people happy for uh, 20 minutes a day because that is the career that I've chosen. My reputation uh, has been destroyed as somebody. There are many people who still think uh, I am a white supremacist and a Nazi and all of these things. They're just, it's garbage. It's purely untrue. Now, uh, I, I survived this. Uh, I, when I say survived, I mean I survived this. People don't survive this. 
people do commit suicide because of this endless abuse. Uh, you know, this kind of thing is meant to utterly destroy you and take hope from you, break up your family, break up your career, your life, drive you to despair. That's what they want to do to you because you do not subscribe to their weirdo SJW narrative. Now, this snake here, this a-hole, Richard Johnson, uh, he runs Bleeding Cool, which is the worst website in comics. If you want to understand how bad comics have gotten, uh, just, just the ad, the pop-up ads... Uh, on this website should give you a sense of the desperation uh, and <laughs> the duplicity and the poisonousness, uh, the danger of comics, the danger to the health of, you know, the danger to the health of your computer and the danger to the health of your soul uh, is all wrapped up in taking a visit to uh, Bleeding Cool. Um, now, all right, so Rich Johnson wrote eight hit pieces on me in the past 14 months. Eight. I don't think he's ever done that about anyone before. He really made a concerted effort to take me out. And this is a guy who used to say hi to me at conventions. Uh, he always knew I was a Republican. He always knew this. But after the election of Trump, these guys just had to take their grief out somehow on someone in some way. And they really chose me. They chose to make, uh, I don't know, an example out of me. They did their very best. Um, but you see, I'm Ethan Van Skyver, and it's really, really, really hard to get rid of somebody who actually has talent. It's hard. People will always pay for your talent. If you're a comic book artist and you're worried uh, about you know monsters like this um, attacking you and destroying your career for who you are, the fundamentals of your, of your, of your being, um, you have to stand up to them and believe in your fans and believe in your customer base. I told my fans, I said, you know what, I uh, have left DC Comics, I am going to fold my arms over my chest, close my eyes, fall backwards, and hope you guys catch me. I'm launching a book called Cyberfrog. I launched a comic book called Cyberfrog through, my, uh, through Indiegogo, and it turned out to be the biggest crowdfunded comic book of all time. Of all time. So, um, that scared them. They no longer have any power or control over me. I am 100% funded and supported by you. Not by them, not by people they can influence, really. Not by organizations uh, that need to bow to their threats. I'm, I'm funded and supported by the fans, by you guys who watch my videos every day. So uh, what, what is the end result of that? Uh, the end result of that is... <laughs> he goes, by the way, he goes through a whole thing here. He writes this as like, yeah, my God, we had to actually, you know, we consulted people about this and uh, you might not like this. It's like, look, this is where it all goes kablooey. They're talking about having to acknowledge that despite the fact that they poured all of their energy into dis not destroying my just my career, destroying my life, okay, destroying my heart, my soul, um, and um, making it unsafe, literally unsafe for me to walk around as a human being. Uh, despite all that, uh, here I am. I am the 74th most powerful man in comics now after the year that you guys have given me. You guys. Not them, not me, you guys. We did this. We did this together. Comicsgate did this. Now, uh, of course, they're going to denigrate me at every turn in this article. Leaving DC Comics after prominent creators refused to work with them anymore. SJWs over at DC Comics and Marvel got together and organized to petition. And I know who led the campaign. Now, Rich Johnson actually let me know <laughs> who led the camp. Which writer? Which disgusting slime ball writer? started the campaign and started to influence other writers to say, we're not going to work with Ethan Van Skyver. Um, you should get rid of him because we're not going to work with him. Um, which was shocking. Uh, this guy has a comic book about a police officer who has a sexual relationship with his dog. Okay? Uh, that's, that's the state of comics right now. This writer has a comic book about a police officer who has sex with his dog and I'm the one who's quote-unquote problematic because I voted for Donald Trump. <laughs> Build a wall. Build a wall between me and these people, please, Mr. President. Uh, he used the usual mixture of Comicsgate virtue signaling. Do you see how they're doing this? Do you see the, the rhetoric? You know, that I am the one who's virtue signaling? No, it's, it's obviously SJWs who do that. Identity politics and, uh, see? and mocking hater videos. This is meant to make me angry because this is what SJWs do all of this. 
And so he's trying to flip it around. He's being funny. This is the British wit of Benny Hill, uh, I would say. Uh, not exactly Monty Python. Meant to uh, be insulting and snarky. Uh, to raise over half a million dollars. No, over $600,000 on Indiegogo for his still upcoming, hasn't come out yet, Cyberfrog comic revival. The highest amount raised on crowdfunding by any comic creator in the year. No, of all time. Of all time. Uh, it helps that he can actually draw. Thank you. Uh, this helped t him take the position as the leading Comicscape figure as Richard Meyer stepped back. So this is a shot at Richard Meyer. He's trying to uh, create some sort of conflict between me and Richard Meyer. Like, I have taken his spot. Um, okay. I'll see how this is, this is, this is Rich Johnson. This is how he writes. This is what he does. Every word is calculated to be insulting and to annoy, uh, to antagonize. Every single word. Um, due to his legal case with Mark Wade, uh, and not wanting to give the defense further ammunition. Okay, so now he's suggesting that Mark Wade has lots of ammunition against Richard Meyer, who, by the way, is suing Mark Wade for tortious interference. Mark Wade, once probably one of the top ten most powerful men in comics, uh, Bleeding Cool, by the way, put him at number 97. Okay, so I'm, I'm 74, I'm nine, uh, he's 97. Apparently, I'm way more powerful than Mark Wade now. That's shocking. Uh I could have told you that 10 years ago. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, you know, he's Richard Meyer has a very, very good case. He's suing Mark Wade for tortious interference. Uh, Richard C. Meyer was challenged by uh, the, the subjects of his very valid and very clever, smart, pointed criticism to make his own comic book. And when Richard Meyer did and raised $400,000 for Jawbreakers, Mark Wade personally found out who the publisher was going to be, who had a contract and an agreement with Richard C. Meyer. He went and he got in between. He called that publisher up and said, uh, I've got a hate mob that's going to come down on you. Okay, In essence, uh, there's a hate mob and I can fix it. Uh, hey, uh, you know, nice store. It'd be a shame if something happened uh, to it, wouldn't it? Uh, I can fix it. Um, just letting you know who you got in bed with. Now, Mark Wade committed textbook tortious interference. Uh, Richard Meyer had the money to sue. We raised even more money for him to be able to pursue uh, you know, a lawsuit, to, to pursue taking Mark Wade to court, to have to stand before a judge. No settlement. Stand before a judge, and you're going to take your punishment. You're going to take justice. You're going to get ju uh, justice. It's pretty cut and dry at this point, but of course the way uh, Richard Johnson phrases this is uh, all meant, uh, again, to antagonize. Uh, of course, uh, me being here at all, here's Rich Johnson, uh, antagonizes uh, the fans, the readership, what's left of, uh, of Bleeding Cool's readership. Uh, it's just nice to be included, thanks. Look at this, hmm, giving Ethan Van Sky visibility uh, boo. They meant by. by putting him on the list was a choice. No, it wasn't. It, you have no choice to put me on this list. You have no choice anymore. Um, the fans, the, the people who are watching this video now, uh, the people who supported Comicsgate, who have supported Cyberfrog, uh, those people, they put me here. And there's nothing he could do about it. There's nothing you could do about it except for lie. There, there's nothing this guy could do. You could lie even more. Uh, that would be something the Pleading Cool, uh, by the way, is accustomed to. And I will say, finally, you know, after this would be the ninth time, I guess, that I've been in an article uh, written by Rich Johnson on this garbage website. After I left DC Comics in May, Rich Johnson reached out to me and said, I've been uh, tasked to look into the situation uh, about you leaving DC Comics. We believe that you were fired from DC Comics because people didn't want to work with you anymore not true, uh, hopeful rumor and innuendo. And I said, well, I'd be happy uh, to do an interview with you and talk you through this. Uh, you know, as long as, we, you can ask me anything that you want, as long as you promise to publish every single word I say. Okay? Uh, unbound by DC Comics, I can actually be honest and I can tell you the truth about everything that went on. Publish every word I say. Be a man of your word. And he agreed. He agreed to do that. Uh, we went back and forth ten times. Um, I am very proud of that interview. I have it. I still have it. It's never seen print because 
he didn't publish it. His questions to me became more argumentative, uh, more whiny. Uh, and before too long, I said, you're just badgering me. You know, I, I, this, this, is, this is now you badgering me. This is no longer a professional interview. Uh, this is you not being happy with the answers you're getting, me having answers for you, and you getting very upset about it. And I sent the interview uh, to Richard C. Meyer, your boy Zach of Diversity in Comics, and he said, you sound like Comics Gate's George Washington. Indeed, that is why that interview has never seen print, or publication, I should say, at Bleeding Cool. Uh, Richard Johnson is not a man of his word. He did not publish the interview, as he said he would. Um... And uh, I think that says everything that needs to be said about him. Uh, am I the 74th most powerful man in comics? Uh, according to him, uh, but I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, when I am on a live stream and when I am talking to you guys and when I am drawing Cyberfrog uh, and uh, feeling your support, uh, I feel like the number one most powerful man in comics. And I want to thank you guys for taking me from the worst point of my life which was at the beginning of this year, to the very pinnacle okay, of a long and storied career in comics. I owe it entirely, entirely to you, the fans, all of it. And I promise you 2019 is going to be even better. We're going to stand up to these people. Uh, we are going to show them down, uh, and we are going to stand them down. We're going to make a difference in comics, because only we can. Uh, so with that having been said, I want to thank you guys for this. Uh, if there was a trophy uh, that came with being the 74th most powerful man in comics, it'd be a very small trophy, uh, but I would take it. I'd, I'd carry it proudly. Um, I would stand with that trophy. And again, I would thank you and thank my wife and thank my family and thank everybody who stood by me and made this possible. All right. Thanks very much, guys. Hey, want to follow me on Twitter? Okay, cool. I'm at Ethan Van Skyver. Talk to you there. Join the fandom menace and execute your own Order 66 with our incredible line of t-shirts, Soy Low, a Soy Wars story, Tico, a Soy Wars story, and our brand new smoking hot Soy Wars plan nine. Make a statement today. This is the only trilogy you'll ever need. The link is below in the description. If you enjoyed this video and want to become part of this community, subscribe to this channel by clicking the Laughing Man Face logo right on your screen. Ring the bell for notifications as well. You'll never miss a live chat. And stay tuned. Another video by Comic Artist Pro Secrets is coming right up.